We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. So tonight, I've got a question for Sean that echoes many similar questions I've seen all over the web. As a huge superhero RPG fan, I want to know what your thoughts are on the new Marvel Multiverse RPG now that it's out in the public, at least in paid playtest format so far. Now, before we dive into that, though, I want to talk some credentials. I want, I want to get some, some cred here to see why people should listen to us over other people. And you shouldn't listen to us over other people. You should listen to us and lots of other people and make your own decision. But why, why we feel um, we're capable of talking about this. So first off, um, I have some RPGs, but Sean's the big RPG, superhero RPG fan. So how many super RPGs are in your collection so far? Well, I mean, here there's a there's a stack. This here is is a stack of, of a number of them, and that's just because I haven't actually read those yet. Uh, those aren't those aren't all the ones on the bookshelf uh, right now. I'm sitting on, I believe, a uh, twenty physical copies of systems, not including source books and 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 various stuff. Uh, and then I have another twenty five or so in digital only form. Uh, some because it's the only format they come in, mm -hmm. others I haven't been able to find in physical or just haven't gotten around to purchasing in physical, or it's in some cases, the physical hasn't shipped yet and I just yep. have the PDFs uh, that, that I've downloaded uh, until the uh, physical Kickstarter ships. I was going to say, like, a, a collection of 45 RPGs doesn't sound that big, but 45 superhero RPGs, I think that's pretty significant. Now, you don't also don't just collect these, right? You just commented the ones behind you is basically your pile of shame, your two read pile, pile your self of shame, whatever you want to go by. Self of opportunity for those who prefer that term. Um, you both run and play in various online supers games, some of which have gone better than others. <laughs> Indeed. Now, while I haven't run all of those I mentioned by any means, I have been involved in superhero role play in one form or another for a good decade or so, both <laughs> as a player and a GM or whatever you choose to call that role for your game. Mm -hmm. uh, personally, uh, in games I'm running, I prefer editor as the title in a supers game uh, since I really try to push the comic book style and editor sure. just kind of fits fits in a little bit better. That fits for me. I always tell the players they're the guest writers, but I don't usually have a specific term for the DM, but that makes sense. They're the guest writers, you're the editor. Now, one final thing I think is worth knowing before we move on to your thoughts about this specific Superheroes RPG. Everyone's looking for something different in a Supers RPG. What do you look for? What type of Supers gamer are you? I know there's people out there who love the crunch and the numbers and initiative segments and counting inches and seeing how many pounds they can lift or how many squares they can fly. And I know there's others who are much happier with a purely descriptive power like force rays and some narrative cues where do you fall on that scale well as with many of our listeners i'm sure the answer has probably changed somewhat more mm -hmm. drastically during the pandemic to be sure now right now i'm leaning towards more rules light less crunchy systems with okay. a strong distributed narrative control in large part thanks to the need to play distributed online rather than sessions where all the players get together now, sure. that being said, I do enjoy a bit of crunch in a Supers game. But, and this will become important, I have never liked RPGs that feel more like a miniature skirmish game. Okay. So what's more important to you then, if you like that, what, what, what type of crunch? So you want to be able to compare numbers? Like, right. is it for that compare two people to see where they are in a scale? So, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, we have talked about this and, and I, I hit it on the head every time. I, I feel like a, a parrot, but scale. <laughs> it's all about scale. Uh, you can't do supers without properly without scale or a very, very narrow focus and, and okay. ignoring a whole lot of the super genre. But you can't really do with a Marvel RPG instead of a Marvel Absolutely. Streets RPG I mean, or Marvel, a Cosmic Marvel RPG. Right. Mar Marvel really plays to that whole, you know, from Galactus to, uh, you know, all your all your street level uh, folks in, uh, in in New York City there who are in yeah, Hell's Kitchen cleaning up cleaning up Hell's Kitchen without much in the way of powers. All right, and on my side of things, I am also a Supers RPG fan. Um, I haven't read nearly as many different systems as Sean. I tend to find a system I like and stick with it. 
um, for years for me, and actually the first role-playing game I ever played was the TSR Marvel Super Heroes game, the phase rip system. That was my first role-playing game I ever played in my entire life. And honestly, and still to this day, impacts what I like out of a game. I have never been a level up to get more stuff, to beat the bad guy, to be, get better stuff, to beat the bigger bad guy, to get better stuff, to defeat the bad. I just, I've never been a fan of that. And I also always liked systems where you're getting beaten down and fighting against something bigger. And I think both of those come from Marvel. It was interesting because I had to really think about this and I had to think way, way back. Not quite as back as far as your Marvel TSR experiences. Right. But uh, similarly, and, and, and I think I may have actually blocked this out of my mind for quite a while because the first Supers game I played in was actually Palladium's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mm -hmm. Now, honestly, I don't recall much about it. We probably only played a single session back in the day uh, because there was a lot of that that sort of went on in the in the RPG club we were both a part of. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, Palladium, honest to God, was my introduction to superhero RPGs. And I, amazing. I remember I got this making far. characters way more than playing that. Though I know we both were in a game under Tim Pine as a as yep. a GM. Assuming it was called GM, I don't remember. Now from. From Marvel, no, I'm not going to go through my entire history here, but I did try DC Heroes next, which to me was that scale. Like I, I will say in TSR Marvel Superheroes was there's inches and there's stats and there's bands, but DC went to minutia and crunch in detail. And I can honestly say I don't want to ever have to use the log function on my calculator in a role-playing game ever again, please. Ah, uh, yes, the Mayfair system. See, the problem was you were using a calculator. <laughs> it was designed based off of a slide rule because everyone had a slide rule in the 80s, of course. I, to be honest, I had one, and maybe that might have made it easier. Maybe that's <laughs> what I did wrong. I didn't use my slide rule, my dad's slide rule, when playing DC Heroes. Um, I did play other superhero games in there many years later, though, um, Speaking of playtest, since we're talking about a playtest document tonight, um, the awesome Cam Banks reached out to me and asked me to do some playtesting on the Margaret Weiss Productions Marvel Heroic Roleplaying. Um, this was a very different game. I this this was when I had my first tablet ever, and I loved Good Reader because all I got was like the preview documents. It was it was multiple separate PDFs, including one that was still a Word document, right? This game hooked me. Like, I, I had tried a couple other super games in the middle. I will admit I never played the big ones like Champions or whatever. But, oh, Marvel Heroic Roleplaying was awesome. But it was, it had a learning curve, especially as a trad gamer trying to wrap my head around Cortex Plus was not easy. Um, what it took was playing it. This was the first roleplaying game that absolutely convinced me that you cannot make a final decision on a roleplaying game before playing it. Uh, no, we're going to be talking about Marvel tonight without having played it yet. Um, sitting down to play that game was completely different than reading it. This was a narrative system. Um, it's one of those, I tend to call them player BS systems, where the players try to BS the, the, the game master and get away with as much as they want, which can be brilliant and can be terrible. Uh, it depends on how well you moderate it. It was all about selecting from your powers and telling a story. And honestly, it has what to me now is my my judge on a superhero RPG is can Aunt May beat the Hulk by making him cry? And you could mechanically do that. To my, in my opinion, Marvel Heroic Roleplaying from Margaret Weiss Productions is the best Marvel RPG that's been published so far. All right. Well, sadly, this is one I still haven't dabbled in, but it does unquestionably hold a warm place in the heart of many Marvel RPG fans, to be sure. Oddly, though, I still actually hear more about Phase Rip yeah. than Heroic. It's true. Um, actually, another one, it's, I'll get to that in a second, sorry. Um, most recently, Sentinel Comics is, is the, the new hotness for me as far as superhero games. I have played this. I have not run it. I have read the starter set. I own the core book, so there's my pile of shame for, for RPG rule books. And I got to say, it's a fa fantastic system that I think splits the balance between some crunch and narrative. There are some very scripted things. It's definitely got a Powered by the Apocalypse influence on that of like, you have moves, I guess we'll call them. Your powers have description ways to use them, but it used like the escalation system from Marvel Heroic and it has a, a fate point style system for affecting the narrative. It, it, it may beat out Marvel Heroic role-playing for me if I played it more, 
But Sentinel Comics is not licensed. This is not a Marvel role-playing game. It is a standalone game set in the Sentinels of the Multiverse universe. Which I guess I should say it is licensed if Sentinels of the Multiverse counts as a license, but it's not Marvel DC. Now, sadly, my first experience at a Sentinels table was going to be like the week after the pandemic locked down in Ontario yeah, and was obviously literally. canceled. So I can't speak with any specific expertise on it. Though, again, right now, it is one of the top options out there. And I really need to get it to the table because it may actually take over for me as yeah. a lot of people have really talked about that balance of crunch and narrative, mm -hmm. which is what I have really kind of always wanted um, and, and yet to find. So, so, so far, what we're finding out this episode is Mo and Sean need to get together and play these <laughs> games. So we might, we might have to plan this somehow. I don't know how, but it, it'll probably be online um, unless we need miniatures and stuff, but you can still do that on Roll20 and actually play through all of these. <laughs> um, so despite the number of games Sean has, I played more Marvel games than Sean has. Yeah. So that has made a difference. So I, I also have a copy of the highly sought after, the very vaunted, considered by many, the best ever published Marvel role-playing game, which is the Marvel Saga role-playing system put out by TSR. So we're going back. This was card driven. This was literally a hand of cards you use to make decisions on and you flip decks. Now I have played the Dragonlance saga system and loved it. I honestly think that is one of the best before its time narrative modern role playing games that was not modern at the time, like, like is from the past and people forgot how to play in between and then rediscovered some of the stuff that was in that game. Um, sadly, I have not taken the time to read this. I feel guilty because I'm like, man, if we pre played prepared for this episode like if i knew i was going to do this a month ahead of time i might have tried to read it beforehand but i managed to find a complete copy of it at city lights in london for 50 canadian and i couldn't pass up so so really like of all you need to come down and play explore that one with me because i haven't even done it but like i need to run i don't did you even back in the day play phase rip marvel with me not with you no no see i ran it for my cousin so much but there was a period sean and i weren't talking to each <laughs> other and went to separate schools and i must have been in that period but yeah, I'm, I'd like, honestly, I'm sure Corey and Kat would be up for it too. Like the next time you're down, maybe we'll do, instead of trying to fit in eight board games, we'll try to fit <laughs> in like two or three RPGs. All right. And, uh, you know, for me right now, it's Basques. Um, even after getting a bit frustrated with aspects of it, I'm mm -hmm. back to both playing and running it. Uh, it's both powerful in telling stories and really low friction for online play. I will admit, I like Mass. I have, I've only played Mass. I played it under three different DMs and had a great time every time. All right, let's get to what people really care about, I think. Now that you know a bit about of our Supers RPG background, let's move on to the latest Marvel role-playing game titled The Marvel Multiverse Role-Playing Game. Does it have 616 anything on the cover? Like, does it say the 616 nope. system? Nope. Or you only learn that once you're inside? Yep. I wasn't sure if that was a subtitle. But yes, using an all-new system. So right now, all there is out there for this game is a soft cover playtest edition, a playtest that you have to pay for. So I'm going to start with that. I am not a fan of paying to play test someone else's game. Play testers should be the ones getting paid. So I admit it was with a bitter taste in my mouth that I bought this book. Though I will say what has been provided is pretty complete for what it is. Okay. They haven't released something with huge problems, though there is an online errata for things players do catch. Now, one thing to note is the number of forms it's been released in, in physical, Kindle, Roll20, and Demiplane, which is a digital tool set service that I actually hadn't heard of, but plan on looking at when I get the time. Now, Matt has really been pushing the Demiplane for people who want digital. I don't know much about why. Um, personally, I'm a little shocked they didn't go with PDF. Uh, their excuse is they didn't want piracy. I'm not sure if that's a valid excuse because I can go get the game in PDF right now if I really wanted to. I don't do that, and I don't recommend anyone else either. Yes, they. I don't think they should be charging for this, but I also don't think you should be stealing it if they think they can charge for it. Fair enough. Pay the price. Yeah, it, it's interesting that they use the term playtester or because actually in the front of the book, they credit their playtesters. Um, there yeah. is a full list of playtesters who are credited in here and were probably paid so why am I not getting paid as a play tester since that's yeah. what you're calling me? <laughs> now, I, I will fully admit that they're not the first. I would be calling them out a lot louder if this wasn't already done by Pathfinder and FASA with Star Wars and not FASA, sorry, Fantasy Flight 
with Star Wars. So it's not the first company to do it. And the fact it's like a number one bestseller on Amazon means people are willing to pay for it. So fair enough. Um, I, I guess it's, it's also a collector's item. Like if you're going for comic book fans, you know, here you buy your limited edition graphic novel with variant cover that won't match the original. Yeah. Like overall, it must've worked. Like you bought it, <laughs> you've got a copy. So I, I, guess, I guess it worked. Um, so what do you get for 14 Canadian or whatever it costs? So the price is nine ninety nine USD, but with exchange and digital format taxes in certain areas and whatnot, it is a bit higher here in Canada. Now, what you get is a soft cover, one hundred and twenty pa- pa- page, full color comic book. Right. The covers are a bit more firm than your standard comic book, and the paper inside is glossy, but not great paper quality. It shows sure. every crease and bend and flex and indent glaringly so so more the quality of a like a graphic novel than than a book yeah and and size wise just to just to point out it is exactly the size of a comic book okay that fits i I guess comic book collectors throw it on the shelves with the rest of their comics yep all right now that we know what you get physically how about the contents what are we looking at here as far as setting fluff mechanics what like usually expect a role-playing game book to go here's an intro Here's how to make characters. Here's the setting. Here's how to do combat. And here's an adventure in the backup book or whatever. What do we get here? Well, now the designer, Matt Forbeck himself, said to me on Twitter, there's only so much we could cram into 120 pages. And okay. while that's true, they didn't maximize their use of space as there okay. is a lot of art in this book. Hmm. I wonder if that was there for the comic fans. That said... You can get a description of the core Marvel, uh, core mechanics, the much vaunted Marvel 616 system, a rather thorough character creation, okay, combat system, and sample Marvel characters, and a small adventure to try out. Oh, yeah, I, that, it's all right. Um, so, one thing I always loved in the previous Marvel games, you mentioned there's 10 characters. I loved reading about the marvel heroes and villains actually i had tory hooked the last time he was over i showed him my old red binder from uh the marvel universe handbooks which were like the monster manuals and i was actually buying expansions for phase rip marvel long after i stopped running the game for those books if i saw them anywhere i bought them and i would just sit and read them so what do we do we get that do we get a full description of these characters and who they are and who their secret identities are and they're villains and who they get along with. And... Uh, you get 10 Marvel characters and a Hydra thug. Um, <laughs> sorry, agent, not thug. Uh, oh. That's it. Um, each oh. one gets, well, each of the Marvel characters gets one page. Um, one-sided? Or one, like... side, one side of one page. Okay. Um, the basically all, enough of the details to, to sort of fill out most of what's on a character sheet. Um, but you know, the rest you can kind of fill in yourself if you happen to know that character or have a, you know, what whatever Marvel's version of the who's who is DC, DC did who's who. I don't know if I forget what Marvel called their version of the who's who. Um, I think but, it was just Marvel universe, which yeah, is possibly. what the monster manuals were called. But, uh, yeah, so it, they, I, I expect that there will be that sort of same thing in the, in the future, yeah, yeah. but what they've given you now is enough to cover what they've put in this 120 page book. I, I can't say too much because while well, the original TSR Marvel Superheroes Yellow Box came with four heroes. So and I think three villains. So honestly, it's it's more than you got. That. <laughs> All right. So six one six. Everyone's wondering what's six one six. Um, I do know this is a proprietary system. This is something created by Marvel or created by Matt or someone on the team. This is not based on any established uh system, though I will admit, from what I see, it's similar to Dragon Age, but not quite. Now, I know that it's 616, and that means something to Marvel fans. Something like every multiverse has its own number. So so is 616 the cinematic or, like, the current comic book reality or, like, some... I don't even know. <laughs> so the main Marvel comic book universe is designated Earth 616. The MCU okay. is actually Earth 199999, for those keeping track. Okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> The book actually does state in its little intro page that your game is in its own universe within the infinite universes of the Marvel system. Not saying you can't cross universes, but they cover themselves so that you to avoid your home game messing with MCU continuity. 
<laughs> I get that, but then they shouldn't call it 616. It should be like six question mark six or something. <laughs> that's that's an odd choice to go. It's a 616 game, but it's not in 616. It's in your own version. That's an odd choice. All right, what? so what's 616? What is this system? So this is a relatively straightforward three-die system with one of the die being a different color, D6, 3D6, okay. with, uh, with one code being a different color. If you buy an official Marvel set when they come out, uh, the one on the special Marvel die will be a Marvel logo. Now, generally speaking, you roll three dice, add the results, and compare to a target value. That's, right. you know, there's, there's, there's bonuses and, you know, all that fancy stuff. But realistically, you roll your three die, add it up, and compare to the target value. Okay. But as you'd expect, with having given us something a name, there are special cases. So first off, three ones is a botch. Not surprisingly, but a botch is actually pretty rare. Uh, three ones is one in 216 chance. So, you know, compared to a D20 roll, your, your odds of botching are, are reasonably low. Now, interestingly, while three ones is a botch, three sixes is not the best roll. It is, however, the highest value you can roll. So an 18 is still the best number you can get. Okay. It's just not the best roll. The best roll is two sixes on your regular dice and a one or a marble symbol on the marble mm -hmm. die. This okay. is what is called an ultimate fantastic roll. Ultimate which... fantastic. What are we watching? A Jay series? Like, Sorry. <laughs> So this so, is this is not only an automatic thing. success. So whatever you are attempting, okay. you succeed. There are also additional bonuses, and you get to ignore some some possible negatives that could have come up in the scene. Uh, basically, it's it's you know the best thing you could possibly ever do in a game. You are the hero. You are fantastic. Fair. Everyone cheers and bows before you. Uh, <laughs> now, in addition to that. Anytime your Marvel die shows a one or the Marvel symbol, yeah. it is a fantastic roll. Okay. And now that is regardless of success or failure. Oh, nice. Nice. So this gives you your narrative. Yes. And, or no, but mechanics, cool. depending on whether or not the roll was a success or failure numerically. And this fantastic roll may also have a specific trigger of fantastic within your power, your specific power or powers. Okay. I, the ultimate fantastic role stuff. Ultimate fantastic role. Like there's something about that name. I, 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 I really, if I, if I'm smart, I should probably record an ultimate fantastic soundbite. Like, you know, like, like something out of mortal Kombat. every time you start say distributing it. that so that people yes. can use that on, as on like Are a, a, a soundboard. <laughs> it will be like, like it's, it's gotta be a thing. <laughs> Uh, so do doubles do anything? The reason I'm asking this, I keep seeing people compare this system to the Dragon Age or the Age system, A-G-E system from Green Ronin. No, not at all. Okay. Because that also uses three dice and there's a one die that's a different color called your Dragon die in, in Dragon Age, at least, and in Fantasy Age. But what happens on that is your middle die is your degree of success. But when you roll doubles, you get points to spend based on that die to cool, do cool stuff. So it actually sounds quite different. So the overall is still roll three d six to beat a target number. Yeah, it's but this is not the target that. number. And if that one, if you hit a one on the Marvel die, then the magic starts, the you know, happening. Fantastic roll happens. Yeah, I, 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 I've been watching a lot of Ultraman, and I, I can't <laughs> help but ultra fantastic roll king dx. Like I just anyway. So you mentioned the game includes character creation. You said it was pretty significant. This, to me, caught my eye right away, and I'll admit it was one of the selling points when this game, like the initial press came out. Everyone noticed on the cover there's like a grayed out question mark character, right? Which implies you get to be in the game, and I love that because many, uh, on actually on average, most of the previous Marvel games have either avoided character creation completely, wasn't an option, or provided a less than satisfactory system usually based on here's where the these characters are at so set your character where you think you are right so you're like oh i'm between aunt may and 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 j jonah jameson so i'm a three you know or whatever i don't know why i picked the two like <laughs> i was trying to think of two of the lower ones right That's, i guess i'm rating myself there you go <laughs> you know james probably kicked my butt um anyway 
how does character gen work in the Marvel multiverse? Now, I have to say, they have given a pretty hefty character creation system. And okay. unless I miss my guess, based on what I've seen so far, it's going to get even more robust in the final release. You have not seen the final form of <laughs> character creation. So rank is their character level. Um, mm -hmm. And that goes from 1 to 25. And determines things like how much and how many powers you can have. Uh, as well as your uh, number of, of points you can spend on your attributes. Okay. So this this brings in, again, back to one of my favorite topics in Super RPGs, scale. Street-level starters are going to keep their rank low, while Avengers are going to step things up a bit, and Captain Marvel is a 25. <laughs> okay. So now, yep. is this like levels and the fact you can level up? So yes, you can level up. Okay. But it's it's kind of one of those things where they don't really push it. Um again, it's a lot of the superhero genre, while there there are two sides to this. There there will you will get into an argument in every forum. Uh, mm -hmm. but a lot of superheroes outside of you know the masks and the the street level stuff is once you have your origin story, you're kind of set. You know, that's how the yep. Marvel Universe has generally worked outside of other universes or, you know, that, you know, a, a, a something that goes off for a little while and then comes back. Uh, so generally speaking, you know, you're, you're not going to level up Captain Marvel. You're not going to level up the Hulk. Um, so, yes, you can level up your character if you choose to play a game that way. But okay. it's not 100 percent the design form of the system. I, I, honestly, that's good to hear because it sounds like you can. Because there's going to be gamers out there who want to. Absolutely, but there definitely are. There's going to be gamers out there who are going to use this as beat up so many mooks to get enough XP to level up my guy so I can beat up more mooks. And we kind of went over this earlier. <laughs> and there's going to be the people who are like, "Well, no." So like, I, I, Peter Parker maybe gets into the Avengers, but that's about as far as he's going to go. Yep. So. Uh, one thing your rank determines, again, like I mentioned, is your point spend for ability scores. Okay. Now, ability scores, uh, I'm not going to list them all off, but they're actually called Marvel. So the the the, the acronym Marvel is all your different score scores, me mental, agility, whatever they all are. It's um, easier to remember than phase rip. <laughs> exactly. Um, so the scores are actually on a plus four to minus four range. So okay. zero is your kind of average Joe. Uh, and then plus four and minus four. Now, okay. you're not stuck within that level. Uh, with with there are other other aspects um, will give you a, a, the ability to beyond, go beyond that. But your basic, you know, mm -hmm. average level is plus to minus four. So next you get archetypes. Uh, and so far, there are only six of them. But again, that's something I do expect to... Uh, Come on. And that this is things uh, like Blaster or, you know, they're, they're sort of your, your class uh, your class and they modify your character further mm -hmm. um, as a character class often does in, in many RPGs. Are we talking like mutants versus altered humans? You so the difference terms from the original uh, the different game ones is actually a uh, striker. Um, oh, so, it's more role? so Black Panther is a striker. Captain America is a polymath. Uh, um, polymath. Uh, Captain Marvel is a blaster. Uh, okay. Groot so it's more like loser. MMO. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, very, it's very more MMO like MMO classic. party roles. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So uh, you know, character class in, a, in an MMO term is is, is very yeah good more so than the D and D term or an origin because the previous Marvels tend to do that altered human mutant right that techie rich person whatever I don't remember them all I I, I remember the first two right now of course there are powers <laughs> yeah. now powers are arranged in sets of powers so you get basically a cloud of powers um and you can uh, other steps will determine how many powers and from how many different sets you can choose okay um and, and again your uh, scale the scale here your um uh, is limiting where you know how many of uh, how far down that chain you can go so you can't mm. get all of the powers or you can't pick the higher powers from a certain set if you aren't a high enough rank um one of the interesting ones that people that i've seen people call out is you can get thunder but you can't get lightning until you're like uh you can get thunder <laughs> at rank five but you can't get lightning until rank 15 
Uh, it's a little silly. Okay. So, you know. Um, so one one question. Um, one of the big things in phase rip Marvel were power stunts. How limited are these powers? Like, like are they you have web slingers, so you can shoot a web line and swing, and that's it. They're, or they're, is it I can shoot webs so I can wrap people up, I can hit people, I can tie things. There, I can... there are actually uh seven different web powers that okay. allow you to do those very different things, but each one is, is it... pretty narrow and specific. Okay. But when it comes to stunts, there is the fantastic. So when you make uh, those okay. fantastic rolls, sometimes you're gonna be triggering what you when you know what you would probably call stunts but they call fantastic actions or whatever within the powers um of, of things to go so uh can you beyond... change it so that if i'm playing spider-man they're all they're they're amazing roles <laughs> uh, ultimate the, amazing roles. well one of the really interesting things um is there is a power called wisecracking um these okay. are called utility powers um so that anyone can grab these there's a set of utility powers that aren't listed in any one of the individual sets uh wisecracking is one of them but interestingly okay. if you make an ultimate fantastic roll you cause damage as a wisecracker uh, uh that, that is there more than one type of damage we're probably delving a little this deeper is actually, than i planned on yeah, so this is that that is mental damage not physical okay that, damage. i i have less <laughs> of a problem with it as long as it's not like yeah. your hit points go down because yeah, you need a witty bar there, there is there is a difference between mental and physical damage so okay. Fair enough. Um, yeah, like we're going to get into some detail. I want some crunch, but I don't, I don't need to know every little. <laughs> so beyond are. beyond the uh, once you get past the archetypes and the powers and yeah. your, your stats, then you're just getting into basic descriptors and, you know, filling out your character sheet with all the okay. other stuff you want to fill out. Now, does it have anything like um like you played some power or not power by apocalypse? I'm drawing it to aspects. Or, you know, like your inspirations, your keywords, any of that type of stuff there, that we tend to see in modern of that, games. There is some of that in the book. Uh, it doesn't really make much. It doesn't make much. Okay, so it's not addressed, but it looks like it's going to be it's there. there. Yeah, but it's okay. there is there is definitely there to give people inspiration when building sure. their character. So you're not just stuck with, uh, you know, blank sheet. All right. So with the MMO rules, this actually goes well into a question we got on our Patreon before this episode went live. So Dave asked, do you think this is the sort of game where team synergy will be a big deal that you build around? Like Spider-Man makes webs and the Hulk tosses people in them. So I think they want it to be. And okay. they have taken some steps with what they call these utility powers that I was mentioning. Uh, and some of these, uh, as well as comboing other powers, could certainly be used in that way. Okay. Now they haven't, at least in this document, delved deeply into that aspect of their use. Fair. But fastball special is there as a specific utility power <laughs> to appease all of the X-Men fans out there who you know are going to be immediately oh, yeah. trying that. Totally true. No, I get that. I like that. Um, like, so as soon as you mentioned the roles too, like having a blaster and a this definitely implies that whole you're going to try to make a group of mixed, yep. I forget what you called them, not Archetypes. classes. Archetypes, thank you. So moving on to the adventure, we, I think uh, we, we're, we're kind of skipping over combat. But so there's one adventure in the book. Now, I don't want to spoil anything, but how long would this take to play? Like, is this, this a, you know, Lord of the Rings, the one ring starter set where I've got probably a year's campaign if I really wanted to stretch it out, moving my hobbits through the Shire? Or are we looking at like a single session, kind of learn the rules and you're done con game? So this is a one shot, 100%. Yeah. Um, an experienced GM using pre-gen characters would be able to move this pretty swiftly, and I doubt it would take a full con slot. Wow. Okay. Um, well, you know, you, once you get into the teaching the system or generating characters, you might be able to to, to fill a full con slot, but it's it's four pages. Okay. <laughs> so, Hana, to be honest, that sounds more like a playtest. Like like some of the best playtests. I I playtested Feng Shui too for Robin Laws, and what he sent was the adventure in the back of the book. And he said, run it as often as you can. Tell me everything about the sessions. Record them if you can. Tell me everything you can. And that is a single session. It's actually a con game that he used to run that he found was really good for introducing the game. So to me, that that, that doesn't, it fits what this product is, but yep. I'm disappointed. Yep, no, absolutely. Again, we're paying for this. And yeah. that's, it, you, the paying for it is what makes it a disappointment. If it was yeah. a free, you know, hey, we need you to test Here's, this. That's a whole different story. Yes. But because we're paying for it, it feels a little bit tight. <laughs> I agree. I agree. So 
we we kind of I kind of skipped this in the notes, but I did want to touch on this. I just totally forgot about it. Combat. It's a huge section of the book, right? You're mentioning that's yeah. it's like a, a, the biggest part of the book is the combat session. I don't want to know turn by turn, but what are we looking at here as far as a combat system overall? So you are looking at. I mean, you're going to want to more than likely use minis. Uh, okay. There is it's it you know powers have specific ranges in you know spaces. Um, mm. Everything is, is is sort of grid focused. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, I'm not a big fan of the the super hyper miniature combat, and this really kind of lends itself to that. Um, right. Everything, as I said, you know, uh, the 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 <laughs> the the utility power wisecracker is Does an attack seem. mechanism. Um, everything in the game currently is designed as some form of combat. Wow. Um, that's really what they have doubled down on. Um, the the adventure is combat. Um, it talk mm -hmm. the DM tells you, do you want to go in and go and kill people sneakily, or do you want to go in the front door and attack everyone on mass? That's kind of the the, the choices you wow. get as players in the adventure. Um, there's you know here's a little bit of a setup to let you know to let you get an idea of how you want to attack people. Now, are there maps to fight these combats on? There, there is. There are maps both in the book and available online. Uh, again, in the book, one of the problems with printing out a comic book size book is things are tiny. So yeah. the map is tiny. But what's even worse is the character sheet, which would be reasonable on an eight and a half by eleven sheet sheet of paper. Mm. At six by ten, is really tiny and 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 oddly shaped. <laughs> so I recommend. Yeah going to the website, which we'll give later when we're talking a little bit further and downloading the map and the play character right. sheets from there to print out. So for tactical combat, do you have all the tropes of like, you're going to roll initiative and it's, is it a, you roll the hit or is it opposed? Again, just everything, give, is, the everything is against a target, uh, target value. And that target value is either another player's uh, defense stats okay. or, uh, or a, a set by the, uh, by the GM. So that, that's a good thing, at least to me. I, I hate opposed rolls. I hate the, I hit. No, you didn't. I, yeah. I hate that feeling in multiple ways besides the, the latency of two players having to make rolls. No, no. So I've that's an improvement. It. Now, I, I what they haven't just got delved into is PvP. Um, and so if you want to have, you know, Spider-Man and, and Hulk fight oh, as players. So the characters they, can't actually fight each other? That That's surprising because that's a Marvel thing. No, they haven't delved, again, they haven't delved into that yet. That I'm just a, is so, more so, than likely something they are they are holding off onto for yeah. the the play test, but uh, in my does, reading that didn't come up. Yeah, uh, that's actually interesting because it does point out something else, which means the villain stats are different than the player stats. Obviously, well, because again, there's only, there's only one villain in there. Um, although they do talk about uh, possibly using, uh, you know, basically just flipped uh, using villain uh, heroes as villains, so using the okay. same stats as uh, from a hero as a villain. So. Yeah, but it's obviously if you don't have player versus player, there must be different mechanics for interacting with a villain. So well, the, I mean, the, the only thing you're going to do is attack them. So yeah. you have a defense stack, they have a <laughs> defense guess, stack. There's not, there yeah. isn't much in the way of interaction in this system. Yet. Well, it just sounds like then you could play PvP perfectly fine. Yeah, no, you, yeah, 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 I suppose you could. Like if the mechanics are the same on both sides, you should be able to just do it. Yeah, no, that's fair. Anyway, um, probably enough on that. People could, we're, we're not going to give you all the details. You go buy it yourself <laughs> if you want it. Um, so, the other thing I always like out of a good starter set is now that I'm done, I played the adventure in the back of the book. I, I usually want to do one of two things. And one of those is go play the main game, right? That's going to be the big goal, but that's not out yet. So the other thing is continue using those beginner set rules or the, those play tests. Is there enough here for, we'll say an experienced DM, like not someone new off the street, but someone who's run games before to take this and kind of make up their own scenarios and keep going with what's in there? I think it depends a lot on what you want to play. Um, as you said, a skilled GM should have enough to work with here to be able to experiment with the system beyond there in the adventure. Um, okay. But outside of an experienced GM who knows how to craft things from scratch and know, you know, if, if you're a, if you're an experienced D and D player who only ever runs scripted adventures, you're probably going to be, you know, okay. struggling a little bit. But if you're someone who's used to, you know, pulling up, uh, you know, doing some sandbox adventures or, or, you know, making up something from scratch, then yeah, there's probably enough information there to go to play right. out a little more. And it is worth noting, this isn't a beginner box. This no. is a playtest document, right? So it's not like I expected 
there to be hand holding for yeah, writing it's, it's an ash can it's how you know it's described much of the time all right i think that's a good summary of what you get and that so as a superhero rpg fan who plays and runs multiple different games what do you like about what you've seen about multi marvel multiverse so far so i think the character creation so many people are happy to see a mm -hmm. character creation system and while it has its limits it's more robust than one might expect from marvel right marvel yeah. wants you to use their their mm -hmm. ip and and love their ip and and, and fawn over their ip um, yeah. So the fact that you're getting this significant character creation, and again, I still feel like he's got more to give us, um, that mm -hmm. there will be more of it in, in the uh, final book, there's a very solid way to bring your ideas into the Marvel Universe in a way that I don't think we've necessarily seen uh, this thoroughly in any Marvel game yet. One thing I missed earlier, you said there, there's 10 characters in there. Can you play a Marvel character? Yep, yep. You're, like, you're, like there are pregens? Yeah, okay. yeah, there's 10. I, I'm yeah, like, the wait, the 10 characters you can only make are, characters. are essentially pregens. So. Okay, I, I wanted to, I'm like, wait a minute. Maybe you can only make your own. I didn't thought of that. Nope, nope. All right, we got what you like. What about, what didn't you like? So this game is extremely limited. Mm. As Matt said, you can only get so much in. And as a result, they chose it's just combat and character creation. Now, that makes a degree of sense. Combat is unquestionably a vital aspect of not only a super system, but Marvel in general. Yeah. Uh, but even with the adventure, it is about which combat the methods, again, the, the, which combat methods the heroes choose to solve the problem is right. the adventure, right? It's, there's nothing involving skills in uh, out of combat activities, nothing, mm. uh, just nothing. <laughs> so you can fight. I, I, you keep saying like, oh, you can only fit so much 120 pages. I'm like, I've played fantastic two page RPGs. Well, so I mean, my it, argument would be uh, the four color hack is 80 pages. Yeah, uh, exactly. It's a complete system. Uh, that, and it's like, also, or it's also comic book sized. <laughs> and I'm just like, like 120 pages is not a small amount. I, I get it. It's Marvel. And I'm sure there's a lot of Marvelness in there that takes up extra space. Again. Uh, so I, you know, I'll and, do a, I'll do a quick little, little flip here, but you know, Pretty much every page you have art. A lot of art. A lot of art. A lot of art. You're yeah. you're not going to find a page without you know a quarter of your use usable two page spread minimum, yeah. taken up with really nice. Again, it's In great quality test. Marvel art. But I want to play the game and I want to learn about the game. Yeah. I know what Spider Man looks like. But yeah, and it's a play test. Like, like I expect less art in a play test. I want to play test the rules, not say you have a pretty book. But, but they I guess need that's to a justify, way to charge they for it. To yeah. it's a I just say you flipping through that, it looked like you had a wizard magazine. <laughs> it really did. All right. So it's a play test, which means you're supposed to play it and or read it or do both, hopefully do both, and then give your feedback. What have they done to be able for people to provide their feedback? I do really hope they've done something so, so people can at least complain or say it's awesome. So thankfully, they have done this right. Okay, good. So if you go to marvel.com slash RPG, Easy they have enough. a forum you fill out that has a few multiple choice questions to, you know, line up their, their answers, but then also open forms to answer, enter your thoughts and opinions uh, in, in multiple, you know, areas. So mm -hmm. I have already most certainly taken advantage of this as well as reaching out to Matt on Twitter. Uh, and I may well, again, I, you know, I'm probably going to do at least one more read through of this and, and, you know, take, take advantage of, of the time and probably make more comments in the future. All right. So, so far, based on what I'm seeing in my social media feeds, um, we're not the only ones disappointed by the direction this seems to be going. Now, again, this is a, a, a segment of the game. Like, we're really hoping you're going to have all that social secret identities, getting phone calls from Mary Jane in the middle of fight moments somehow put into this. Because if they don't do that, it's not a good Marvel RPG. Um, what are you hoping for the result of this playtest? What are you hoping gets changed? What do you want to see changed in the rules or added as a result of this paid play test that's going on right now. Yeah, and my socials as well. The opinion has been less than positive. Uh, we've had some really long discussions about this on the RPG Discord uh, that you and I are both a part of. 
Um, and honestly, I kind of feel sorry for Matt. Oh, yeah. I think the limitation on what could be included space-wise was going to cause problems no matter what he did. I'm sure he had no say in how much space there was, no, how much not. art was in there. He he was given what he had. And that's, you know, understandable given given the, the corporate uh, backing of this whole thing. It was going to cause problems no matter what. It was, it may have been a no-win situation. Yeah. Now, what, to be honest, I should, I should call this out, actually. This is being published by Marvel, a.k.a. Disney. Yes. This is not being published by an established, well-known role-playing game company. This is not Wizards of the Coast. It's not Green Ronin. It's not Paizo. This is Marvel publishing this, which is actually a first for a Marvel license. Absolutely. This is being published by Marvel, and I am sure their level of creative control is way more than any RPG designer probably wants to work under. Well, absolutely. Um, so. What I want, and the reason I specifically reached out to Matt on Twitter, is non-combat. So yeah. I want Spidey to have to work to hide his identity at school. I want Bruce Banner solving science problems. I want Natasha and Yelena sneaking around, getting info without killing people. So unfortunately, based on Matt's response, I don't think that exists yet. Oof. Now, it's on the table. But apparently, the playtest response is how they will choose in uh -huh. what direction they're going to go for filling out the rest of the book, which is apparently going to be about a 300 page uh, book. But then again, with the art requirements in this book, you wonder how many usable pages there will actually be in a 300 page book. Well, so here's yet again, uh, people provide your feedback. Um, even if you haven't bought it, go provide your feedback and say, I, we know there's no social, there's only combat, give me more. Yeah. And then maybe we'll get get it. Um, I, Yeah, that's interesting. I, so that, again, why didn't they do it free? I don't, I'm, I'm still kind of baffled <laughs> by their, if the, so the game's not written. I, if again, they haven't even like, decided based on, based where on the response I was it. given, um, mm -hmm. you know, he said that was something that we might do. Like, <laughs> so for a book that's coming out in in a, in two years less than two years oh that's nowadays that's not that surprising a timeline so <laughs> all right so anything else you want to share about the current state of the marvel multiverse role-playing game so right now to me personally this isn't an rpg system it's a combat mm -hmm. simulator uh in the discord i got uh, i called it marvel Spa smash brothers for tabletop um Again, everything in the game is about damage and combat. Uh, it's, it's just about fighting. And while that would make a great skirmish game, that's not what I call an RPG. That's fair. I totally can see it. Now, I will give the same conceit I mentioned earlier. Um, the original yellow box TSR Marvel superheroes, uh, though they managed to do it in a nine-page rulebook, uh, is a combat game. It gives you four heroes, it gives you villains, it gives you maps, and it gives you tokens to put on those maps and gives you a battle called Day of the Octopus. So I can't be too upset about it when the game that got me started on role-playing and the first Marvel game kind of did the same thing. Now, I would like to think that the future and other Marvel games have proved that people want to tell other stories than who can beat up who, um and well based on what you said it sounds like the playtest may go that way it's on the table right so let's hopefully we get to see some of that so that's it for our thoughts so far on the marvel multiverse role-playing game i'm sure we'll be talking about this one again in the future as more content is released and it'd be really awesome if we could somehow get in an actual play at some point maybe that's something we can work out online or not It'll be really interesting to see over the next two years or so how this game evolves and changes as time goes on. Indeed, with, you know, 300, more than double the, the page count for the final document, last I heard, there's a lot of room for growth from what they have now. Mm -hmm. And I really do wish Matt all the best in his development of this system. Totally fair. Now we're here to answer your gaming and game night questions. If you got a question for us, head over to the website, click on Ask the Bellhop, email questions at tabletopbellhop.com. Hit me up on social media where I can be found everywhere at tabletopbellhop, one word. 